Sorry for turning my back to you. I want to show you this cool t-shirt. I bought it at the Glorious Sound Recording Studio when I went to play in Memphis with my drummer Balzano. Of course, we could not miss the chance of visiting the birthplace of rock and roll. The image depicts the tape machines used by Sam Phillips to achieve its trademark sound, marked by vocals and guitars drenched in a short echo, known as Blackback Delay. I'm not wearing this t-shirt by chance. In fact, it is really spot on on our new topic. We are talking about tape echo delay. 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 <laughs> Of course, it's always good to get a guitar pedal and randomly tweak the knobs to experiment new sounds without even a definite idea of what you're trying to do. On the other hand, one of the best ways to approach any guitar effect is first asking yourself what you want to do with it. Why would you add a given stamp box to your pedal board? What sounds are you after? Is that effect really helpful? To achieve those sounds, you have to point out your source of inspiration or tone reference. The first thing that personally I would expect from a delay effect is the capability of reproducing the great slapback effects heard on old rock and roll recordings. This album of the Johnny Burnett rock and roll trio is a brilliant example, with Paul Barlison's Wet Goddess Choir pouring so much energy. Allegedly, the band was rejected by Sam Phillips, so it is quite ironical to bring them as an archetype of the Sun Records trademark slapback sound. It seems that some rhythm guitar parts on this album might have been recorded by Grady Martin, who took part at some recording sessions. But this does not detract from Barlison's brilliant playing and tone. I bet you all know what it is. The legendary first album of the Led Zeppelin, recorded in October 1968. This is the edition remastered by Jimmy Page. I always loved the deep, lush delay of the guitar solo on Willie Dixon's cover, You Shook Me. I'm particularly impressed with the smooth decay of the multiple repeats. Reportedly, this effect was achieved with studio equipment, but it appears to be very similar to an Ecoplex tape Eco, which Page used extensively through the years. When I was eight, my older brother Italo brought at home this double live album of the progressive rock band Gong. The guitar solo on Radio Gnome Invisible really blew me away. I used to listen to it over and over. The guitar player was Steve Village, described by Vintage Guitar Magazine as the greatest master of tapico guitar in rock history. Another typical example of his lead guitar style, drenched in captivating textures of rich ecoplex layers. <laughs> What a tape echo is? The invention of tape echo delay dates back to the early 50s and is generally credited to the ingenious guitarist and inventor Les Paul, who also pioneered the multi-track recording. Early experiments with studio equipment were also carried out by European avant-garde musicians such as Karl-Heinz Stockhausen. 
After the big success of Sam Phillips' productions, the Eek Effect finally got out of the recording studios and arrived onto live music stages with the portable Ecosonic. This guitar amplifier was made by Ray Butts in 1953. It featured a built-in Tepico unit, intended for slapback delay. Butts built less than 70 of those amplifiers. The second one was sold to Chet Atkins in 1954. Another one of them was extensively used by Scotty Moore in his studio and live work with Elvis Presley. The Copycat, made in England, is thought to be the first eco machine manufactured as a standalone compact unit. It was designed by Charlie Watkins in 1958 and marketed under his own brand WAM, Watkins Electric Music Company. This is a model from the early 70s with a solid state preamplifier, and I really want to thank my dear friends Danny Tiberino and Eddie Leo for their help and support and for lending it to me. Its straightforward design can help us to understand how a tape echo works. The tape delay emulates natural echo by recording the input sound on a magnetic tape loop and playing it back after a time lag of milliseconds. The length of the lag time or delay depends on the amount of time that the moving tape takes to travel the distance from the record head to the playback head. This delay time between the original input audio signal and the repeats can be adjusted by either changing the tape speed and varying the distance between the record and the playback heads. A slower motor speed or wider distance between the heads determines longer delay times. A portion of the audio recorded on tape is fed back to the recording head to be recorded again on tape, which generates multiple repetitions that smoothly decay over time. By controlling the intensity of signal sent back to tape, you can adjust the number of repetitions, ranging from single repeat slap back at minimal level to multiple repeats prominent echo. Stretching further to extreme settings of this feedback control can lead the tape machine into a state known as self oscillation, where infinite repeats are generated in a runaway space sonic landscape. A swell control balances the mix of dry input signal with the affected echo signal. Typically, this tape echo delay features an erase head that clears the tape at the start of its trail, a record head and a number of playback heads set at a progressive distance from the record head. The playback heads can also be combined together to achieve more complex multi-tap delay effects. Many companies started to market their answer to the British copycat. Fender produced the Eco Chamber, developed after the short-lived Ecophonic by Ray Stolley. Here is a 1963 unit of the Eco Chamber seen in Flavio Camorani's Fender Vintage Collection. Hank Marvin was also a great innovator in the early 60s, the groundbreaking Western-themed instrumentals of the Shadows had a major influence on Ennio Morricone. Marvin's guitar sound was soaked in a longer prominent delay, achieved with the Italian tube-based eco-unit Meazzi Ecomatic. Guitarist Don Dixon and engineer Mac Battle in 1959 developed the famous Ecoplex, later sold under the Maestro brand. This efficient, reliable and portable unit finally made it to a large-scale production, reaching a huge number of players. The Ecoplex notably featured a single movable playback head, 
with a slider control to physically vary the distance to the writing head. The tape was conveniently mounted inside a removable tape cartridge. The Ecoplex has been produced in several subsequent versions. The first one and the EP2 had the tube-driven preamplifiers, while the EP3 and later versions featured solid-state circuitry. Another notable Ecoplex user, other than Jimmy Page and Steve Village, is John Martin, who in the 70s used it with acoustic guitars. His album Solid Air, released in February 1973, is generally acknowledged as a masterpiece. <laughs> The first time that I watched this great movie by Jim Jarmusch, I was really blown away by the soundtrack. I asked myself, who on earth could have such a stellar guitar tone? I found the answer in the credits, Neil Young playing his beloved Old Black through an Ecoplex EP3. In the age of audio editing software and sophisticated plugins, the valve tape echo may seem a rough, primitive way to get delay effects, and in fact, that's exactly what it is. On the other hand, the tone of old tape echo machines still appeals to so many musicians. Some producers love the way they add character and warmth to digital recordings. This makes their old original units still quite valuable today, sought after and treasured, especially in recording studios, as outboard effects. Surprisingly, countless modern digital pedals and plugins strive to replicate the classic tone of analog tape delays, and none of them is quite spot on, no matter what they claim. If you are after the lush, warm sound of actual tape echo, only the real deal will get you there. Why the old tape eco machines are still considered so unique and irreplaceable in the 21st century? We'll discuss it in the next episode. Subscribe to the BTR channel and hit the bell to keep posted.